In this video, I will try to explain the physics behind the volleyball set. We will look at the basic science behind how we create power and direction and how we can use this knowledge to improve our game. And hopefully by the end, you will understand how these principles can help you with, for example, setting over a longer distance. If I had to describe setting from a scientific perspective, it would be as simple as moving the ball from point A to point B. Now, if you want to become a good setter, then obviously just getting the ball to point B will not be enough. You also need to have some versatility in your game and adjust the path of the ball depending on your teammates and the type of set they need. And if you want to be an elite setter, then you must be able to set every option from any place on the court and do it without showing your intentions earlier. Now, that last part, deception, isn't fully dependent on science. It's also about statistics and psychological mind games that you play with your opponents, what ultimately makes it subjective. That's why we won't dive deeper into it today. Back to the simple physics. This is me, and I'm performing a basic set. In order for the ball to get to the hitter, point B, it has to follow a specific trajectory. The ball needs to travel at a certain angle and at a certain speed. Let's say in this example the ball needs to move at 2 meters per second from point A to point B. And before we go any further, please keep in mind that the numbers I use in this lesson are just examples. They are not going to be the exact values. They are only here to help me illustrate the concept more easily. The ball needs to move at 2 meters per second from point A to point B. In order to follow that specific path with the speed that we want, it needs to generate two types of force, vertical and horizontal force. A vertical force makes the ball go up before gravity pulls it back down. Horizontal force moves the ball forward, towards the hitter. Of course the ball doesn't produce these forces by itself. I generate them through my movement and I transfer them onto the ball. So let's assume I need to act on the ball with 10 newtons of vertical force and 10 newtons of horizontal force to make a perfect set. Now let's compare a few different ways of setting and how each way will change the amount of force I will need to generate. The first scenario is a standing set. Here we have a situation when I set the ball without jumping, just like a free throw in basketball where a player must keep their feet on the ground. If we assume that the legs not only have to stay on the ground but can't do any work, then in this case all the force, so 10 newtons of horizontal and 10 newtons of vertical, must come from my arms. But the thing is that arms alone can only produce a limited amount of force. And that's super important if I try to set the ball from a longer distance. For example, it would be very difficult to get the ball all the way to the antenna through the whole width of the court without any help from my lower body. The second scenario, jump set. This is the most common type of set where I set the ball at the highest point of my jump. The idea is very similar to the standing set because when I'm at the apex, my body has stopped moving up and for that very short moment, I'm floating in the air. This means that my jump doesn't add any force to my set. There isn't any additional vertical momentum. So again, I fully rely on my arms, just like in the standing set. The slight difference is that now I'm above the ground, so the horizontal distance to point B is a bit shorter. Because of that I need a little less horizontal force, let's say 9 newtons instead of 10. Similar to the first example, it becomes more and more challenging to set that way as the distance to the hitter increases. That's why we rarely see players setting high balls or long distance sets at the apex of their jump. Instead, they use some help from their legs. Just like in the next examples. So, as we've already established, if my arms can't produce the necessary force, I can borrow that force from the lower part of my body. This is a type of situation where I set while being in the jumping motion, while my body is still going up. Let's say I jump with a speed of 1 meter per second. If the timing is right and my body is moving upward while the ball is in my hands, that vertical velocity will help transfer additional force onto the ball. This means that I no longer have to produce the full vertical force with my arms. So instead of using 10 newtons, my arms will now only need to generate 5 newtons of vertical force. I still have to produce 10 newtons of horizontal force, but the vertical momentum from my jump reduces the amount of vertical force my arms have to create. 
Of course, I can generate different amounts of force with the legs, and this will affect how much the arms are involved. In our example, we have a 5 Newton balance, so an equal distribution of force from the legs and from my arms. But if I focus on pushing harder off the ground, then the ratio might show something like 8 Newtons of force from the legs and 2 Newtons from the arms. Paweł Zatorski sets that way. As we can see, he doesn't use that much arm movement, because most of the force comes from his legs. That addition of leg power is especially useful when we need to set the ball in a high arc to give our teammates more time, or when we need to send it all the way to the other side of the net. On the contrary, I might also set the ball when my body is on the way down. This is a situation where I've jumped a bit earlier, and at the moment of the touch I'm already falling back on the ground. Let's say like Tonyuti, who wants to fake the blockers by delaying the moment of the release. I still have to produce 10 newtons horizontally, but because my body goes downward with the ball, I have to produce 15 newtons of vertical force for the ball to exit my hands with the speed of 2 meters per second. The jump doesn't add any power to the set, in fact it takes it away. Because the ball needs more force from our arms, these plays are usually seen on a small distance setting. Players don't set like that when they need to deliver the ball all the way to the other side of the court. It's more of a trick to fake the blockers, rather than use it for movement efficiency. Now, as you might have noticed, um, these examples so far were mostly about vertical force. But there are also situations that affect the horizontal force. For example, when a pass requires me to run towards the ball, I will need to jump slightly forward in order to reach it in a comfortable position. And what happens in that case? If I don't have enough time to decelerate at the end of my approach, then my body will keep moving towards the target at a speed of let's say 1 meter per second. Now I only need to apply 5 newtons of horizontal force. You often see this happening when setters are sprinting towards the ball and in those particular situations it only takes a soft touch to send the ball to the hitter because their body is already moving forward. But the amount of vertical force I need to add will depend on the same principles as we've mentioned previously. In this picture, I am on the way up as I contact the ball, so I will need to use less vertical force. And a very similar, yet opposite situation when I have to run backwards to reach the ball. If I don't have enough time to slow down, I'll need to jump, but this time away from the target. That's the only way I can reach the ball in front of my face while still being in the air. But the thing with this kind of backward jump is that it gives my body that negative momentum, which means my arms have to work harder. Now I need to produce 15 newtons, that's 5 more newtons more than if I had jumped straight up from the same position on the court. These sets are some of the hardest to execute directly to the target. And if you watch closely during a game, they often end up a bit inside the antenna instead of being perfectly on the spot. I hope this video made a few things clearer for you. I know physics isn't the most exciting topic, but hopefully it helps you understand how it actually affects the way your sets work. Now you can see why sometimes it's worth to sacrifice a bit of jump height to gain more leg power, or how your horizontal momentum can change the quality of your set. If you enjoyed the video, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. You're smart enough to know how YouTube works. Take care, get to work and see you in the next video.